Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. At a club wood exchange, I received a piece of Fetzer wood, which is not a normal wood that I would turn. It was just a, a log, and it had a nice, pretty heartwood that I could tell, but a lot of sapwood. Uh, not enough to be able to split it into two, so I decided to take a chance and bore out the pith as it was still wet and then let it dry and then turn it into a vase. So the balance here was how much sapwood to turn off to expose these pretty heartwood, but yet to have enough to make a decent article. So this is a vase out of Fetzer. But key to making this were two things. One, since it's hanging out from the chuck quite a ways, was my DIY steady rest that I made several years ago now, but it's standing the test of time. I'll refer to that in, the, in a link. And for the end, to hold it once uh, I removed the steady rest, I made this domed faceplate, which uh, then I put onto this revolving uh, center. However, that's a one inch, and I, most of my faceplates are one and a quarter to match the lathe, so I have a, just a quick adapter between the two. And that suspended it and held it so it was nice and secure while I finished turning this face out of Fetzer. So, let's turn it now. This section of Fetzer is fresh cut. I'd better get it roughed out quickly. I figure that if I rough it quickly and core out most of the pith, that there is a good chance it can dry without significant cracking. So, here I go. The wood is between centers. I'm using my large bowl gouge at a fairly slow speed due to the off-center vibration. As the wood gets round, I can turn up the speed to get a better and faster cut. Before doing much more work, I will cut a tenon for a better mount. Now mounted to the chuck, I can get serious with shaping. But how serious can I be with a simple vase shape? The more that I cut into heartwood, the better that I'm liking this vase. Too bad the heartwood is not bigger. But there is enough that I can appreciate the vibrant colors in contrast to the sapwood. At this stage of roughing, I think drilling out the center will be enough to relieve drying stress and allow the wood to dry. I have selected a large enough Forstner bit that the bit is bigger than the chuck that holds the bit. That means I can drill much deeper than the length of the bit, but up to the extended length of the tailstock. The wood is wet, so I need to keep clearing out the chips. With that all done, I sealed the wet wood with green wood sealer. With some of the sealer, I stuck on a small piece of plywood over the center hole. My thought was that I did not want to put sealer inside the vase. So the plywood is a somewhat porous plug for while it is drying. It has now been six months and the rate of weight loss is very slow. It's time to turn. First post dry task is to recut the tenon. That piece of plywood is secure enough to provide a mount while I refine the tenon with my skew. The wood has not distorted very much at all. It does not take much to cut off the plywood and clean up the drilled hole to receive a cone live center. 
then trim the exterior. I am torn. I don't want to remove very much wood, but the more I remove, the more pretty wood that is exposed. I'm trying my skew and also my gouge for shear cutting. Now for the hollow. Since this is not enclosed, I will use my large box scraper with cuts directly into the center. The cuts are at an angle that follows the exterior. I go as deep as the scraper allows. There is a bit more, but I'll leave that with the previous drill hole. It is far deeper than any wood turner can reach a finger to feel it. The DIY steady rest gives me uh, some assurance for the base stain in the chuck this far out from the surface. Then clean up the inner edge to the interior with a spindle gouge. Then I sand as much of the interior as I can reach. Now bring up a rounded faceplate onto the live center for tailstock support and remove the steady rest. I start with a large skew. I like the surface that it leaves, except for when I get a bad catch. So I switch to a safer shear cut to finish shaping the surface, then thoroughly sand the outside. Then part off the vase. I undercut with the parting tool, but I don't trust it to go all the way. So near the center, I move the cut away from the bottom to where I can break off the remainder without tearing into the vase. I'm carving off the remaining nub. Many different tools could do this job. Then sand off the bottom with a sanding pad mounted in a Jacobs chuck. Usually I apply walnut oil at this point. However, this face is screaming at me for something else. I have a mix of one part polyurethane, two parts boiled linseed oil, and three parts mineral spirits. There are many variations to this mix. This is one that I'm trying at this time. The finish really brings the vase to life. Please treat your rags as a fire hazard. I will put at least one more coat after this one dries. I was skeptical of the Fetzer at first, but this is a pretty vase. Please put your favorite DIY finish blend in your comments below this video. Here again, the patience is rewarded. The vase has been six months in the turning, but worth it. Even with the wait time, turning green wood is a pleasure. Turning it dry was simply not an option. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends, and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video and add to the over 400 videos to choose from on my website. Please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. Thank you.